I like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim or Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, Bashim or Hakadash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, being the Lord and Savior, the children of Israel, who the world calls Jesus Christ ignorantly, but his true name in the Hebrew language is Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, meaning anointed Savior. Um, uh, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, GMS. And salutations to the hopeful like brother and author pushing the word in sincerity and in truth, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. And of course, to those men, I like to say Shalom, Wa Barakim Al Thumb. Peace and blessings upon you and the Holy Spirit, the Rakadash. And um, I just wanted to do a quick lesson on Sirach, the 34th chapter, and uh, more so the last two verses. And it says, Sirach 34 and 25. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? So is it with the man that fasteth for sins and goeth again and doeth the same. Who will hear his prayer or what doeth his humbling profit him? And I'm going to read that one more time. Sirach 34 and 25. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing and um according to the law if you was to touch uh a dead body you'll be unclean for i believe a period of seven days i believe it's numbers uh yeah numbers 19 11 and it reads he that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean for seven days okay so according to the law, if you was to touch a dead body, you'll be a clean, you'll be unclean for a certain time period. And that time period is seven days. So it says, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? Okay, because you're supposed to, you know, wash it, you're supposed to bathe yourself in water. Okay. But after you, you know, do the purification process after touching the dead body, if you touch it right after you just cleaned yourself, what availeth your washing? Meaning what was the point or what was the profit of you washing yourself in the first place if you knew, if you knew you was going to touch it again? The scripture says, what availeth the washing, right? And then it equates the touching of a dead body to this, verse 26. So is it with a man that fasteth for his sins and goeth again with and doeth the same. Who will hear his prayer or what doeth his humbling Profit him or what do his humbling avail of him? Okay, because another word for avail of it means the profit. Okay, so if you was the you know, we just coming out of the day of atonement, you know, um, and brothers just fasted for their sins. If you go back and do those same sins, what was the point of you even re uh, atoning for in the first place if you knew, if you know that you're going to go back and do the same thing? And first and foremost, I speak. To myself, man. I speak to myself before anybody. Okay? So, so is it with the man that fasted for his sins and goeth again and do it the same. Who will hear his prayer? The Most High is not going to be willing to hear your prayer because you keep doing the same in vain, man. Okay? You keep doing the same in vain. Or what, and, and the scripture says what? And what do of his humbling profit? What's the point of you humbling yourself if you know you're going to go back and do the same sins, man. And this is where the importance of repentance and the meaning of repentance, the importance, what it means to, to truly repent. Because there's two different, there's two, what I'm going to go into this lesson is how the two different sorrows. You have the sorrow of the world, which if you do something, you may feel bad for it, but then you have the godly sorrow. And what I want to go into in today's lesson is what godly sorrow is and what it does. OK. But uh, I'm going to touch on verse 25 one more time. And it says he that watcheth himself after the touching of a dead body. If he touches it again, what availeth his washing? And now spiritually, you know, and this is talking about uh, carnally, you know, actually, you know, physically. But the spiritual meaning behind this is what? You touching or you being involved in the self, your old, your old man, the crucified man. OK. The scripture says what? That we were supposed to shed off the old man and we not supposed to turn back. 
okay? But what? We were supposed to become new creatures in Hamashiach Yahushua. So spiritually, Sarat 34 and 25, spiritually talking about what? The old man, the old you before you came to the truth, before you acknowledge Hamashiach Yahushua as the Lord and Savior, okay? First and foremost of your sins, man. All right? So this is the book of Romans. Um, it's the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 6. And it says, And knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. With who? Yahweh Shai. Our old man is crucified with Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because when Yahweh Shai, you know, as many representations of that cross that Yahweh Shai died on, man. Ultimately, if you want to just put it in a nutshell, what that cross represent, uh, represented that he died on was sin, man. All right. And he bared that, man. So that Lord's will, we can have a chance and receive life, man. So it says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him and that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. OK, now I want to look up that word crucify and uh, what it means to be crucified. Uh, the meaning of crucified, uh, I forgot how to pronounce it in the Greek. Uh, I looked it up earlier, but I forgot how to pronounce it. But, uh, this is the Greek word for it, you know, for the, for the brothers that's into it and going into the Greek, uh, this is the Greek word for it. And it means to crucify along with, right? I'm going to get a little bit more into it. It says right here. I'll start right here where it says Romans 6 and 6 in the Thyre, in the Thyre uh, lexicon, Greek lexicon. I'm going to start right here. All right, so let me highlight it for you, brothers. I'm going to start right there. And it says, by the death of Hamashiach Yahushai upon the cross, I have uttered. And I ha it says, I have become utterly estranged from dead to by the former habit of feeling and action, okay? So, what was dead, what, what became dead was those bad, those sinful habits or, or feelings or actions. That's what was crucified, okay? So, especially coming to the Day of Atonement, what was crucified, your old man, the old habits, your old actions, you're not supposed to touch that again, man. You're not supposed to touch that again, man. That was supposed to that was supposed to be died and buried, and that's it, man. You're not supposed to touch that again. If you touch it, what was the whole point of your purification process? Being washed or being cleansed by the water, which is the word. What was the point? If you know you're going to touch it again, man. And this is where the 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 sorrow versus the godly sorrow comes in, okay? I want to grab the book of Second Corinthians chapter. Uh, I don't like this version. I like the desktop version better. Shalaki Aki. This is a preference. I just like the desktop version better. But this is the book of uh, Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse nine. And it says, now I rejoice that ye were made sorry. OK. But ye. Sorrow to repentance. All right. So you have a sorry and then you have a sorrow to repentance. All right. And it says, for we were made sorry after the after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us and nothing for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. OK, so you have two different types of sorrows, man. So so when you go off all right, and, you know, you sin, there's two types of sorrows that you either going to uh, uh, follow by. You're going to you're going to be sorry. You're going to have the sorrow of the world, which work of death, meaning what? That you could a person can feel sorry for what they did, but they're not going to change their ways. But then you have a godly sorrow. A godly sorrow is going to work with repentance to salvation, meaning what? That you're going to be so sorry for what you've done 
that you're going to change your ways, man. And you're going to try, I mean, try to the best of your abil ability, okay, ability, Shalakia. You're going to try to the best of your ability to not ever do it again, man. That's a godly sorrow, and that's the sorrow that we want to have in this truth, man. That's the sorrow that we want to have for, for the sacrifice of what Hamashiach Yahushai did, man. Okay? That's what we want. A godly sorrow. So I'm going to read that again. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow, worketh repentance to salvation. Man, we want to repent. And the word repent means literally to turn back. It means to turn back. When you break down the word re meaning back and um no no let me break it down in the hebrew okay the hebrew word for repent means to uh is shawab which literally means to turn back from okay when you when you when you when you sin and when you go off and you know you go off man or you went off you're not supposed to make a 360 okay meaning what return back to your old habits you're supposed to make a 180 okay you're supposed to make a 180, meaning what you turn your back from whatever that's uh, causing you to go off. You're not supposed to come full circle facing it uh, once again, man. All right. You're supposed to show up, man, in the Hebrew meaning repent. And that godly sorrow is going to work in repentance to salvation. And that's what we're working for, man. All right. And we can only do, do that through the blood of Hamashiach Yahushai, man. OK, because he's the one that uh, purifies us or cleanses us from our sins, man. So this is why the day of atonement is heavy. But I just wanted to go into this aspect of it, man. All right. Coming into, you know, um, you know, moving on, you know, for the you know next year, try to get better or be better than what you was, you know, the year before, man. All right. It's about improving in this truth, man. So I'm going to close out with this scripture. I didn't want to make the lesson too long. I just wanted to hit the points, man. So this is the point. Uh, Sirach chapter 17, verse 25. And it says. I start at 24. But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted those that failed in patient. Returning to the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, and forsake thy sins meaning what repent make a 180 not a 360 180 forsake thy sins okay for example king david king david didn't have a sorrow of the world meaning what he felt sorry but he still kept doing the same thing over and over and over again he had a godly sorrow and that godly sorrow worketh repentance that he never did that sin again okay so forsake thy sins and make thy prayer before his face in a fin less and that's the point of fin less okay so that's what i wanted to go into you know um coming out of the day of atonement there's something you know i just been meditating on uh something you know that i'm working with you know with myself you know uh, i know all brothers is going through it you know so i just wanted to throw out this quick message so with that you know i hope you brothers out there was edified I like to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai by Hashem Hakadosh, double honors and to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And with that, uh, you know, I say improve, you know, get better in the name of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And with that, I say Shalom.